That sun is ridiculously bright. Welcome everyone to a new journey. I don't know if it was Christmas or a birthday, but my wife bought me this 3D printed like username with a little TikTok logo and it got me interested into looking at 3D printing. But the price of them back like three years ago, ridiculous pricing. So I left it and I never thought of it again. But because this month was quite a good month of income through doing brand deals and things, I thought it would be a nice little a nice little achievement present, if you will. So I looked into 3D printers and lo and behold, there was the Bamboo A1 Mini, which was at like 160 pounds on sale. Then they had the A1, which was 250 or something crazy, like really cheap. And then I looked even more into like the closed units and then that's when the money started going up. And that's when I found Anycubic and their S1 and it had great great reviews across the board, like all these top YouTubers were saying about it, even people that had just started in doing 3D printing like myself said the S1 is, you know, better than the A1 and it's just overall a lot better for an extra, what, £100. And I actually went on Amazon and it was on spring sale, which is perfect because, you know, just before payday, spring sale comes on, it goes down to £337, which to me is a bargain for an enclosure with AI detection, a webcam and all the software, everything just added up. And I thought, you know what? Am I gonna do it? Am I gonna do it? I went and bought it and also some filament to look into the world of 3D printing. Now, I will say this is not a sponsored video in any way shape or form so I can say what the hell I like about these products and no one can stop me now no one can stop me anyway in any of my reviews but they give me guidelines on things to sort of push I guess if you will like oh this has got faster speeds than this one you get what I'm saying where well, this one is going to be a direct this is how I found it this is how the setup was this is what it's like being a first time 3d printing person I've never done this before I've just been watching videos on how to do slicer and whatever the hell it's called like, I've done in 3d model I'm just going to download some stuff and you know enjoy the journey and then make a Deadpool mask because why the bloody hell not? And I'm now waiting on that to arrive, which I'm excited to dive into when it arrives. So when it gets here, so that's why I'm making this massive space here for the 3D printer. So I'll see you when it gets here. I think it's getting shipped at like 6.45 to 9.45, so I've got to wait for it, but let's go. Okay, so as you can see by the clips that I've just played, I've done a couple of prints and I just really want to get my hands on uh, just understanding the, the printer itself and, you know, 
learning the software, things like that. Slight issue with some of the things that have happened while printing. Since they updated their software on the Anycubic Slicer Next or whatever it is, or the actual printer itself, there's been some sort of degrade of the printer itself. So basically, uh, I've been having AI detection issues, thinking that the, the printer was finding, you know, spaghetti faults and things like that. I had to take the little fan cover that I made off because it actually thought that was, again, spaghetti it wasn't it was just filament showing in a different place so, i mean i guess it worked in a sense but then it also didn't then there was a few errors after i changed a setting for uh, when you go to print i think i put it as flow flow something adjustment i can't remember what it was again that popped up saying you know there was an issue with the connector inside the the hot end and um, when i googled it a lot of people actually had said the same thing that there was no issue it's just because this flow rate or filament rate or whatever it was, was set before printing. Their update actually made it downgrade itself um, and have more issues. Um, I can say though, on the phone, I can watch the printer. Uh, it's pretty smooth. Now, again, it is 480p camera, whatever it is, but I can see what the print is doing. I can see that it's working. So that's good for if I'm out and about and I've got the printer going. Now, when it comes down to everyone on YouTube, you all lying. I'm sorry to say it, but the noise is nowhere near what people are making out. This thing's the quietest on the market. You're a liar. You're an absolute liar. Just because someone sent you the printer, you're making out that this is the goddamn best thing on the planet. You are an absolute bullshitter. This thing is so loud. What do you even mean, 44 decibels? Bollocks. I'm sorry. It's not. This thing will sit next to me. It's on my desk, which is sturdy as shit. It, it, goddamn it, it vibrates like crazy. Everything on my desk is doing this. And then when it's doing the Z, uh, the Z axes and also like trying to go Y and X at the same time, and it's just like. <coughs> It's loud as shit. The fans are always going. So when people are like, oh yeah, you know, the only fan that you can hear is the drying element in the Ace Pro. You're a load of liars, man. That, that fan, when it's always on and at 100% on the modular, it's so loud. I don't care. It is so bloody loud. It's right next to me. If I was printing right now, you would hear it hands down. I don't care that people are like, oh, it's in the background. Yes, you're using noise cancellation. You're using a denoise. You're editing your sound in the video. Because I can tell you for now, if that printer was behind me and I'm facing the microphone, that is getting picked up 100%. When it comes down to print quality though, I will give it. It is a decent print quality and it's relatively fast, but I have found that there were some issues with it out of the box uh, that if you didn't know what you were doing and looking for, then you'd be stuck with this default profile that is slow as hell and just makes some god awful prints. So I went online and found a Reddit post saying about that this guy had optimized the print profile and it had all the right stuff. Um, this is how it should have been out of the box sort of thing, like speed wise, sound wise, things like that. So they've put it up for free. If I can find the link, I will link it down below. If not, just type in any cubic Cobra S1 optimized profile or something. I can't remember what it was. The software itself, the Anycubic Slicer Next, absolutely amazing software, really simple to use and learn. I've never once seen a slicer profile or a slice software in my life. Yeah, I sort of actually know what I'm doing now. You wanna print inner wall, outer wall, inner wall to get the best quality on your actual prints overall. If you know 3D printing, you know that printing the outer wall first to then print the inner wall, it lets it harden but then you get a smoother transition instead of it doing like, yeah. Uh, also, I found that Dremels are probably your best friend if you have overhang or any in inconsistencies in your prints. I actually printed a spool holder and it had a few little bits that I just needed to Dremel off. Um, and now it looks, it looks factory made. What can I say? Got some little Lego, Le Lego figurine holders for the pegboard. What I notice as well is when you do this, if you have a cheap filament, use it. Use your cheapest filament ever that you've got before going on to the good stuff because I printed everything in this green which was like a nine pound roll at the time. I didn't want to go and use the 20 pound roll of good filament. Then I found out the nine pound filament was actually a really good filament still. Uh, you know, it printed really nicely. It was a fast PLA as well so it was like super quick. I could do it on sport mode. Again, with the profiles on the Anycubic Cobra S1, on the actual device, you've got speed wise, you've got silent, doesn't make it silent at all. Standard, still loud as shit. And then sport mode, it increases the speed a little bit, 
but doesn't really increase the noise, which is kind of weird. I tend to use sport mode because it just increases just that slight bit. So you'll have like a, a one hour, 15 minute print and it'll probably drop it down to maybe one hour, five minutes. It's not a huge jump. I mean, well, it's probably not even that big to be fair. It's only a small inconsistent like jump it's like three minutes off it just shaves a little bit of time it's not massive yeah when it comes down to first time 3d printing i'm enjoying it i'm you know learning loads of new stuff about this i'm still trying to figure out the best possible print flow rates and speeds and trying to just optimize it a little bit better before i do the deadpool mask because again i don't want to go and do an eight hour print uh, and then it just it give up i have had one actually saying that i've had one issue with the bed not sticking so cheap glue stick a lot of people are saying like oh use elmer purple and all that they they said you can use any glue stick i looked it online i said can you use a prit stick and it said yes just do a thin layer it's only to give it some light adhesive it's not to you can use hairspray if you wanted to apparently instead of going out and paying like 30 odd pounds for glue you can use the cheaper stuff. You've got to remember, after about two prints, that glue's probably disappeared anyway because of the heat. It's, it's not going to stay tacky and adhesive forever. Why spend so much money on just constantly having to clean and reuse glue when you can use a glue stick and it works? What can I say? So that was another issue that I found. That was the first time I ever actually glued my, my plate. So now it works, I guess, really well. So I'm tempted to go and try a bigger print, but it's the time for me because again, it's like seven o'clock. If I went and did a three hour print, it's three hours of a damn bloody noisy machine in the office it, because it's not quiet. It is not quiet. I mean, yes, closing the door compared to opening the door, it is a lot quieter. But when they when people are like, oh, it's it's so silent. I can't even, I can't even hear it. That's because it's not on. That's why you can't hear it, because it's not on. I'm not printing anything. If you, if I was starting to print something, you would hear it, and it would ruin the audio. So that's why I haven't done it. Another thing I've learned is flashlights are amazing to have, because yes, there is an LED in there, but it's not coming from underneath. So you can't actually see what the head is doing. So if it does clog up, you've got to think that. If you can't see it, how the hell is a 480p camera going to see it? They should have either put the camera lower down, so it sees the actual nozzle, or they should have put a light in the bed that sort of shoots that way at the nozzle to make it so the camera's like, yep, there's spaghetti. Because there's been a few times I've had the spaghetti issue, a few times that there's been a like a, a, a software issue where I've gone to print it and it said, you know, it's not on the right bed or something because the print that I've downloaded is for an S3 or some, I don't know what it, a Cobra 3. It's not for the S1, so it's like, oh, it's on a different plate. So then I have to just transfer it over and it works. There's just a few little things that I'm trying to learn slowly, but get in there. And I will say for a first time printer, this is the Cobra S little scraper. Now this is actually downscaled from 100% to, I believe, 40. I mean, it looks minute, but it works. It's sturdy, very strong. And then I just got a black, black like acrylic pen paint pen first time printers i would say this is definitely an absolute steal but not at full price get it on a sale if you can because at full price i would definitely not say this is ready uh, for anyone that's beginning because there's so many issues that i've already come across i've seen other videos where someone's got it sent to them and you know they've had to take the head apart because one of the springs is misplaced in the wrong part and uh, there's just little things that it could improve on that, i mean the noise isn't to me um, an issue because I'm used to having a vinyl cutter which you know is like crazy loud if you've ever had a vinyl cutter or a plotter or whatever they're called for you they are ridiculously loud and compared to this machine this just sounds like an office printer's going off and then now and then the table will shake like crazy but other than that it's the fans that are probably the noisiest thing not actually the print in itself so yeah if you're used to having like hair dryers on all the time then you'll be fine with this just know that a lot of people online are saying it's you know really quiet and you can't hear it at all that's a lie you can hear the fans you can hear it when it is printed in but it is not as it's not ridiculous compared to ones that are not in a closed unit i could guarantee the a1 that i was going to get would be absolutely ridiculous for sound because it's an outer case unit it's just there so it's like <laughs> where this is inside so it's like <laughs> you know what i mean i'm gonna probably leave it there i've got some other stuff i want to print and then we can make some more videos about this if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell because we want to try some more 3D stuff. Let me know some settings you use 
the any cubic slicer next and your best settings for just having a bit more of a smoother overall because there's been some issues where I've printed the poop bucket and it's had like the corners have got too much build up compared to the rest of it I just dremeled that down made it work you don't have to throw prints away if they're just going to be a, like a poop bucket let me know in the comments if you have a 3d printer what do you print how do you print and what like filaments do you use what software do you use i'd love to know a bit more about the 3d printing sort of community but other than that i mean any cubic fair play to you you have a solid machine for 337 pound i mean i'm not complaining when it comes down to the actual product it's just the liars on the youtube side saying it's really quiet and it's really good and you there's things that need improving. Anything that comes out is always gonna need improving at some point in life. Hopefully they fix the little issues with like the AI camera detecting spaghetti when there's not, or the little uh, hot end believing that there's a clog or a wire loose or whatever when there's not. But again, it's always a learning curve and I am excited to carry on this journey of 3D printing. So I might try the Deadpool head now. So wish me luck. Capture, create, captivate, and I'll see you all in the next video. So I'm going to start doing the Deadpool head, but this is what it sounds like just starting up, right? So this is with the uh, the front case closed. So this is before it's even printing. This is just it heating up at the moment. Right, so that's the front case closed. All that's doing is heating up. And this is how it sounds with the door shut. Now imagine how loud that is without an enclosure. So if I'm sitting here, that's all I can hear. This is not, this is not the quietest thing in the world. I'm sorry, but it's damn good either way. But I wanted to do a little sound clip so you believe that the sound is louder than people are making out. So I'm, I'm using the Sony MC1 M1 or whatever the Sony mic, shotgun mic is, and it had noise cancellation on. This is what it's like without noise cancellation. That's loud.